Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ivan Shipin, and I come from Croatia. Uh, I work at the Department of Demography at the University of Zagreb, and uh, this work that I'm going to present to you today is a joint work uh, with my colleagues Christoph Zema from the Vienna Institute of Demography and Peja Mejim Moritz from the University of Zagreb uh, under the program of scientific cooperation with the Austria. In case you didn't know, uh, this year marks 100 years since the uh, Yugoslavia came into existence. So we think this symposium is a very good opportunity to uh, pay tribute uh, in some kind to Yugoslav fertility transition from the cohort perspective. And it's, I think it's a kind of fair that um, Austrians are uh, paying uh, for this project as they, uh, <laughs> as the Austrian and the Hungarian Empire play, play the role in uh, formation of Yugoslavia. Okay, uh, let us be serious. Uh, I will show you a long time uh, picture of fertility transition in this region, covering a whole century, so uh, for 100 years of birth cohorts in the region, differences between countries and uh, developments in uh, cohort fertility, parity progression ratios, and uh, also distribution of women by uh, even parity. Okay, just a, a short introduction to uh, history. So, what's so special about Yugoslavia? Uh, in addition to not having enough uh, data on fertility in this region, this part of Europe, Yugoslavia is an interesting case study uh, because it brought together very different lands uh, with very uh, diverse uh, uh, development and they were dominated by foreign empires for centuries. Uh, 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 western parts of Yugoslavia covering uh, Slovenia and Croatia um, uh, were dominated by uh, Western influences, mostly by uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire, and uh, uh, eastern parts were dominated by uh, Ottoman and Turkish influences, so the uh, country was uh, on the crossroads of cultures, bringing together heterogeneous populations, um, uh, with very different demographic transition pathways and uh, especially with respect to fertility. Yugoslavia broke up in uh, 1991 uh, when a series of wars ended its uh, socialist uh, era that lasted from 1945. Uh, well, uh, in order to uh, interpret uh, the fertility uh, uh, development in Yugoslavia, as you can see, uh, there are so many complex factors that could influence fertility. Uh, I, I would just mention uh, some of them. Uh, Yugoslavia, especially socialist Yugoslavia after Second World War, uh, was a the demographic trend in socialist Yugoslavia were a carbon copy of global de demographic trends. Differences in um, uh, fertility levels between the most and least developed regions of Yugoslavia uh, was uh, in the second half of the 20th century reflected actually uh, demographic di differences on the global level of, of that time uh, between uh, developed countries on the west and the third world countries uh, uh, who were less developed. So the, some of the most contentious issues that in the global population uh, debate were actually reproduced in, in Yugoslavia's political and expert uh, discourse. Uh, also, um, some other interesting fact that uh, uh, was uh, interesting for Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia did not have an openly pronatalist policy, but endorsed uh, a very liberal principle family planning. Uh, uh, country was a trendsetter in the family, uh, in the women's rights. Uh, and actually it was one of the first, if not the first country in the world to proclaim in its constitution that it is a human right to decide freely on childbearing in, in, the, in, the, in the 70s. Uh, next, uh, also a uh, country had very liberal uh, abortion regulation uh, uh, starting in and from the 1950s. Abortion was widely and uh, also very often repeatedly used by women regardless of their economic, socioeconomic background and educational level. Uh, it was not so uncommon to find individual women who had uh, more than 10 abortions uh, in their reproductive uh, life. 
of time, especially in some countries like uh, Serbia, where there are a number of registered abortions in the 1970s and 1980s was, uh, uh, where uh, exceeded the number of live births in, in those, uh, those periods. Uh, also, uh, something about the economic, uh, uh, the Yugoslav regime was faced with the labor uh, surplus uh, of almost from the beginning, so the pressure of women to enter into labor, to join the labor force was not so present in Yugoslavia like in, uh, yeah, in uh, many, many other uh, socialist uh, countries. Uh, also, female education and labor market activity uh, uh, was not so... Uh, no prominent like in uh, other uh, socialist countries. Okay, let's now move to the main point, to the data we have. We have uh, plenty of data and we collected them uh, uh, many years. Uh, we, now, uh, we now have uh, collected almost every, everything we wanted, except maybe we are waiting for some uh, data on Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia, then we will be we will be full, uh, actually full of data. Uh, we used uh, censuses uh, starting from 1948 uh, uh, up to the latest census, uh, collected the data uh, for all censuses except 1948, data on, on uh, women by number of children ever born uh, by single years. Uh, only for 1948 we have uh, 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 five years uh, report. So, uh, we used uh, at least uh, three rounds of or, or more censuses for every country in order to calculate, uh, call, calculate as I said, uh, CFR, PPR, and party composition data are available, but not all, uh, not all uh, at the cohort and facility and education database. Okay, uh, this is uh, an example where. Uh, we show you how we calculated actually those uh, uh, those indicators. Uh, ex uh, an example from the census is uh, we have we have for Serbia. So uh, this uh, diagram actually illustrates how we deal with several census. We, we combine them using uh, uh, local uh, regression fitting and uh, uh, take the averages. Uh, so uh, as you can see. Uh, census, uh, the, the censuses, different censuses, averages shows that the uh, data are very constant and that shows similar numbers uh, mm -hmm. uh, across different uh, across different censuses. Okay, uh, this is a picture where you can see um, uh, more clearly fertility transition in former Yugoslavia. We have uh, countries that start their fertility transition from the different levels. Uh, and for different times, uh, um, we have uh, Slovenia and Croatia as a foreigners in fertility transition, uh, closely followed by Serbia. So they form a, a first class cluster of countries. As you can see, they reached the below the replacement uh, cohort fertility already already in the 1930s. So then we have another cluster of countries. Uh, uh, consist, consisting of Bosnia, Macedonia, and uh, lately joined by Montenegro. That they started a fertility transition from the very high uh, numbers uh, in the in the in the cohort born in the late 19th century and early 20th century, and started to drop very quickly. And uh, uh, Kosovo is uh, an exception. Uh, uh, we, we, we will see maybe uh, later in the discussion reasons for why. Okay, what's the reason, uh, how can we explain with uh, more detailed data? In, when we look into childlessness, we don't see some clear patterns. Uh, uh, as you can see, Macedonia and Kosovo, they had very low childlessness rates. Uh, uh, probably maybe one of the reasons that uh, the marriage rates were, uh, uh, marriage was universal in, uh, in those countries. Uh, compared to, for example, Slovenia, where we already in the 19th century and the beginning of 20th century birth cohorts, uh, mm, they had childlessness rates uh, about the uh, quarter. And in Slovenia, and on that time, it was not so uncommon to have uh, 15 to 20 percent of women who were not uh, married. Uh, uh, proportion, but when we, we skipped uh, all of those uh, graphs and, uh, and see proportion of women with, with very big families, 
So uh, exactly this 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 figure this uh, this picture depicts depicts actually uh, and it looks very much similar like that uh, uh, like this one. Look at this cohort completely fertility rate and this one proportion of women with, with six children. So differences in CFR was best described by proportion of very large families. So uh, when the very large family started to decline, uh, cohort fertility also started uh, to decline uh, in a certain way. Prevailing parity, two-child family is quickly prevalent in all countries except uh, except Kosovo, but they didn't uh, follow uh, sequently, you know, jump, but, but they jumped immediately from the uh, parity 6 to parity 2, uh, you know, almost all countries. Uh, parity composition, again, we can see clear uh, formation of three clusters, uh, Croatia, Serbia and Slovenia, they're like triplets, yeah, uh, I'll be finished. Uh, so, a composition of uh, uh, three plus children, uh, Decline in, in almost all countries except uh, except in, in Kosovo. Parity progression uh, ratios in, in three uh, different cohorts. As you can see, uh, PPR two to three and PPR two uh, three to four already declined in all countries except Kosovo. And now PPR one to two and two to three makes the difference. You can see from uh, uh, from this graph how the uh, transition evolved. Uh, and the conclusion, we saw that uh, three uh, roads to lower cohort fertility in the, in the, in the Yugoslavia. That there was a common preference for two child families and marriage in all countries. There is still a curious case of Kosovo. Kosovo uh, was uh, yeah, uh, a country that uh, actually requires a, a special explanation beside it. So, for now, most likely explanation changing social norms. So family size, uh, we will investigate into, in further ex and extend this database and add uh, uh, education as a new exploratory variable. Thank you for your attention.